Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different, which is installing Solus into our desktop PC right over here. So let's get started. All right, so I already pre-installed it into this operating system, which I will show you right over here as a time-lapse, but it's a lot quicker. It only took about two minutes to do the whole process. And I am actually switching away from Fedora, which I had currently on the system to Solus. And the whole reason behind this is because Solus is probably the only operating system I really haven't fully tested, but it's also very, very unique because it is built from the ground up. It's not using uh, Red Hat or Fedora or any like Ubuntu distributions to build upon on. It's basically from scratch and they're using a different package manager, which is EOPKG, which used to be something else. I forgot the name of it, but I could leave something over here. It's completely different from anything I've used and I want to see how well this system operates and I might stay with this for like a month or two just like I did with Fedora to see how well or how compatible this system is. Now I always wanted to use this uh, operating system on a laptop but unfortunately Solaris only supports a handful of laptops. I mean I wouldn't say a handful they do support like 50 plus or something but not any of the laptops that I own so I haven't really tested this operating system like I normally do using it day in day out on a laptop because of this. I'm going to be installing this on on my desktop which I already did and we're gonna jump right into it again this is budgie so it's something I've used before on Ubuntu because uh, I think deep in limit deep in Linux uses budgie and I haven't installed budgie before so I am a little bit familiar with it I do like the desktop itself because it's very very close to a window is style or mate 2 or even gnome 2 it's very close to that style so you get this start menu type deal and then your categories and then the programs itself i am going to try to find if i could pull up system information where is this let me see if i could type it in system monitor there you go do they use a budgie system monitor no it's a default uh like a gnome version uh, this is on uh, Ryzen 1700 with 16 cores or 16 threads, 8 cores. And on fresh boot, it's only using about 800 megs of RAM, which is really good. Uh, it was, it's very snappy. It actually boots into this operating system pretty quick. I think it's still using X11. Can I find that out? About. Let's see if I go into about system information. This feels very like uh, GNOME this whole thing. I think Budgie might be based off GNOME. Yes, it is using X11. It is using GNOME 40. And they're building their desktop. So it's a lot of plugins, I guess, on top of GNOME. Something I learned, I've used this before. I've just never thought about it. I guess it is using GNOME 40 and it's got a lot of GNOME features in there, especially like this is GNOME, uh, their GNOME status feature. Uh, this is their about box. Feels very, very similar, but I do like this Title, uh, this bar that slides out. Again, very Windows 10 style where you can get your calendar, your notifications. On the older version that I've tested Budgie on, you actually have the option to change some display settings and sound settings over here as well, but it doesn't seem to have it anymore. How easy it is to install a package. So let's find out. I'm gonna go to Google to search because I have no idea. So Solus Wine, let's install Wine. How to use Wine 7 on Solus. So I'm just gonna pull up an operating system here. I mean, a website here. And I know it's terminal. So to update packages, I've never used this. I think I've installed Solus once before and I knew it didn't work very well on laptop and I stopped using it. So I didn't even really learn it. And the reason for that is um, it was on a laptop and I think it was version 3.99999 or something like that. Uh, so I'm really hoping this will restore that faith in playing with this. Um, so yeah, this will update the repository and update all my stuff, I guess. Can I make this larger? I can. And well, this is a GNOME terminal, so it wants to continue. Yes. So this will update everything. So up means to update and to install the package it's basically just uh right here wine i don't have to add any repositories or anything it should just be in the devel now i did read some stuff about this where solaris doesn't have every package up to date uh, somebody was mentioning how thunderbird 
as well as LibreOffice was a little old in the version, which means that we rely on their repository to update everything to the latest. And if they missed a few packages, it's possible that we are running on older versions of certain things. But that review that I read was from a while ago, maybe I think 3.9 or something, not, not the latest version, 4.3. So it is possible that they you know, have the latest version for everything. But right now I'm just updating the system and it seems to be updating pretty well. It's grabbing my internet to the fullest speed. It's downloading, installing. Uh, it's using not even all the cores to get everything done. It seems like it's just chilling here. And having a browser open and my terminal is about 1.7 gigs, which isn't too bad. So I'm gonna let this run for a little bit and let this finish up. I hope I don't have to reboot this computer uh, because I just wanted to install Wine and see how it works. Internet, it comes with Thunderbird, Firefox, Office comes with LibreOffice. I don't use LibreOffice a lot, so I don't know what's the latest version, but I could tell you if I open one of the software maybe i could pull up an about box and see if that person that was actually suggesting that it was an older version look it's not even opening right now while i'm waiting for this to happen i think i could open their software center because they actually have their own software center as well now other than using eopkg uh, you could use Flatpak and Snap packages, I believe, on this machine as well or on this operating system as well so you're not going to be out of software if you can't get it from EOPKG. You could uh, get it definitely from Flatpak or something else. Um, I think because the system is updating, not a lot of things are working for me. I can't even get the software updated to come up. I couldn't get the other thing to pull up. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to wait until this finishes before I could even jump into any operating uh, or any other computer. So let me close this out because I think Firefox is trying to update as well. And yeah, we'll just let this kind of do its thing. Okay, it's finally done. It didn't ask me to reboot. Maybe I should because it seems like it was a pretty big update, but they got everything up and running. So let me see if I could pull up uh, Office Libre Writer. Okay, yeah. It was the update that kind of like locked down the software. So the latest version, I don't know what it is, but let me go to help and go to about. And this shows me version 7.3.3.2. So if I was to go into Firefox, LibreOffice, which my keyboard's not typing for some reason. Office version. Let's see. 7.3.4, which is the latest one. So yes, it is a little bit older. It's not using the latest version. Okay, that's interesting to know. I might need to reboot this because my icons are kind of like messing with me and it doesn't want to close. So there's something going on. Oh, you know what? This got to close. And then maybe this will come up. Nope, that's still having a little bit of an issue, which probably a reboot will fix because that was a pretty big update. It took a while just to get that going. Now, if I want to install Wine, like I was suggesting earlier in the beginning of the video, I would do sudo eopkg install wine devel which is wine 7.0 or development branch really i just have to install 23 megabytes of software yeah 7.12 three megabytes that was that's pretty low let's see wine config that worked right away yeah uh install mono let's install no, I didn't need to install the other thing either. Again, it's missing that. That's probably just because of the update. Don't mind that. That worked really well. That actually was really fast. What else am I gonna check out? I do wanna check out gaming, which is gonna take me a little bit to install. So I'll just pop some videos up over here to see if it would actually work, which is gonna be Star Citizen, obviously. Jumping back into here, hardware drivers. I do have an NVIDIA graphic card. Do I need to install that? Also install the 32-bit because you need it for gaming. So let's install install all of that restart your see i needed to restart something i knew it because the whole thing must have had a kernel update installed so this is a fresh boot i'm just trying to track how long it takes to boot up i'm looking at the seconds right now wow under 10 seconds well un it's really fast that was like a seven second boot from the bio screen all the way up to uh the desktop 
I mean, well, at least to the login. Um, that was not bad at all. So let's go back to hardware drivers. Nvidia. Yep, see, now the boxes are back. And the title bar is not as black anymore. Um, the file dependencies, Wayland. Seems like it's going to work. Nvidia driver common. Let me see if I could pull up my, yeah, software center. Okay, this reminds me, the software center reminds me a little bit of uh, what um, KDE has. KDE has a similar software like this with home install update. Can I search? If I was to search for uh, Steam, let's search for that. Oh yeah, Steam works. Launcher for Steam software. Let's install it through here. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't want to restart yet. Let's install this, then we'll restart. So it's going to need all that. 32-bit libraries for everything because it runs on 32-bit. 233 files to download. It's actually very streamlined. I got to say, everything feels very, very smooth with installing everything. I didn't have any like hiccups so far of having any issues of installing software or clicking on anything other than when it was updating before I couldn't get some programs to open. Uh, let's see. This doesn't help me. I was just trying to see how much this uh, this usage analyzer. I kind of used up some space because I was installing updates and everything. So say minus two gigs from this and you'll get what you... Um, yeah, I would say about two gigs. Or uh, one gig at least, 7.6 gigs total if you do a fresh install at most. Because right now I'm installing a few things here. I installed the graphic card driver as well as did a full one gig update just before. It doesn't seem too bad. Desktop settings. This is another thing that Budgie has, which is very similar to their um, GNOME tweaks. And then here you could actually make your own panels and add more stuff in here. If you wanted to use, say, let's see, alert, add CPU usage, maybe a system tray. No, not system tray. Uh, icon task list, caffeine. Oh, caffeine is a good applet to add. Where does it go? It goes to the center. That's weird. Let's move it down to the bottom. So now I have caffeine and I could keep the screen from falling asleep. Uh, Steam installed. Let's do Steam. Yeah, look at that. Wow, that is quick. It's very responsive. Even just opening these programs. So far, I'm enjoying using it. I mean, I, I need to actually use it for like a week or two, iron out some stuff to see if I'm gonna run into a problem. If you guys are familiar with Solaris, let me know if there's any like weird bugs that happen that I should try to avoid or certain applications that just won't install because I, I'm gonna try to install DaVinci Resolve, uh, Lutris, uh, Star Citizen, and a few other things on here, but mainly try to get this to a worthy advocate scenario where I could actually use this as a desktop. So mainly it's DaVinci Resolve and maybe Photoshop. I'm gonna restart this computer one more time. Um, after I installed the NVIDIA drivers, you see this yellow tint now? <laughs> that was what's bothering me during GNOME. I, you guys told me it's um, yellow filter, so I'll watch, watch display now because it is using gnome back end let's do settings let's go to settings uh no let's go to about why is it not there anymore uh settings and let's go to budgie desktop settings no let's do wall okay you know what it's not here why is it not here System tools, system settings, software center, that's not what I want. Other, and it's not here, utilities. Um, what happened to all my settings? System monitor, print settings. Let's see if it pulls it up. Nope, that doesn't pull it up. I don't know what happened to all the settings. Budget control center. Oh, there you go. It's called budget control center. You see how it's like a yellow tint? I don't know if you could see it through here on the side, but it's a very yellow tint. Go to color. That does nothing. Um, go to, where is it? Displays. And blank screen, scale, orientation. Nope. Power. Um, screen blank. Nope. 
color it's not in there accessibility users background privacy online sound power display color it's not anywhere am i missing it somewhere nvidia next server settings let's see if it detects my 1070 it does but still what's going on with the color profile well I'll worry about this a little bit later because it's going something's going on. So you're going to be seeing this operating system on this channel for quite some time. I am going to try to get everything to work the way I want to. If I have any other complaints or stuff that doesn't work or will not work, I will do a follow up video. Uh, otherwise, any videos that you see from now until um, for another couple of months, I will be using Solaris just to learn it, build it. Uh, see how well it would operate or not well because I'm very familiar with the other operating systems and that is it if you guys have any questions about this hit me down in the comments below if you guys know what the problem is with this color thing because I can't find it uh, also let me know down in the comments below or join my discord anyway that is it for me guys if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as I say my nerd cave hack till it hurts